Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Just waiting for everybody to pop into the room here. Sorry for the short delay. All right. So I'm going to introduce myself and tell you a little bit about our organization before I turn it over to our guest speaker today. Uh, my name is Haley Blake and I'm the Digital Marketing and Events Coordinator with Tech Nation's Career Ready Program. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Tech Nation before we get started. Uh, Tech Nation is a member driven association. We represent Canadian tech companies and for over 60 years we've worked to unite the tech industry and government to champion Canada's future in technology. Um, I'm with our Career Ready program and the Career Ready program offers training resources, wage subsidies and events to support post-secondary students who are interested in tech-based careers. So today we are excited to welcome you to the Startup Skills Series. Uh, this is the first event of 2023 in this series and uh, we will be inviting experts to discuss relevant topics for students and aspiring entrepreneurs. Um, we hope you'll join us for more startup skills events in the future and you can keep up to date by signing up for our event newsletter, which I will link in the chat if you're interested. Um, this session will be recorded just so you're aware and this will be an interactive event as well, so we encourage you to turn on your cameras and participate with us if you're comfortable. So now I will pass things over to our guest speaker Shiraz to introduce himself and start the session. Thank you again for joining us everybody. Thank you, Haley. My name is Shiraz. I'm with Leverage Consulting, but I spend most of my days at Canadian SME Business Magazine. I get to host a lot of their events. They send me out to train companies on how to generate greater influence from a sales perspective. Now, here's the thing. Uh, Haley, you and I got our cameras on. I want to see how many other people feel comfortable enough to also turn their cameras on. If you're not, that's fine. There's no pressure. But if you're willing to, it'd be fantastic. It just lifts the engagement level. And I, I promise you, you'll get more out of it just by simply the act of putting your camera on. There's something about being present in the moment. And you'll see why as we go through today's uh, session. Now, today, we're talking about neuroscience. Okay, well, what is that? Uh, Neurosales, okay, what is that? It simply means that your brain is actively engaged in the process of making decisions. Okay, uh, I didn't mean to, to make, you know, like a duh comment. Of course it is, Shiraz. Like, like, of course your brain is. Okay, well, today what we're going to do is demonstrate how actively involved it actually is. And, uh, you know, Haley, it's actually doing it again. It, um, it uh, won't show me the uh, window again. I'm gonna try one more time and, and uh, let's see what happens here. Sorry folks, that was the technical challenge that we were experiencing earlier. Uh, teams for, for some reason decided to not let us share a window. Um, so I'm just gonna work with Haley and let's see if we can get this done a different way. Yeah, so Haley, if you can go ahead and share that, that'd be fantastic. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, no worries. Here we go. Let me just pull that up. All right, and, and, and Haley, I'm going to try one more time. Folks, thank you, Phil, Gabriel, Mo. Thank you, guys. For I guess you guys jumped on first. Gabriel, thank you for showing up and being present because I'm going to need some help. Are you are you okay helping me out today, Gabriel? Yeah, okay, fantastic. Uh, there, we're, we're, we got to get a list going. We're, we're going to get this whole order going, and um, I think I might be able to uh, share it. Let, let, let's see, one second. Guys, we apologize uh, for the last time. Haley, do you want to try to uh, drop your window? And then I'm going to try it one more time, and then we're good to fly. You guys have sure. been awesome in your patience. Thank you so much. We're going to try this one more time, and we're going to share. I won't blame Teams. I'm sure Teams is a fantastic, fantastic tool. Uh, and here we go and share. We're good to go, and bam. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Thanks. The neuroscience of sales 
artistry. And that's the topic of what we are speaking about today. Now, uh, it's about gaining credibility through connection. Here's the first thing that I want to show you guys, because this kind of blew my mind. Yes, folks, you can now officially take your fries to go. For the rest of your life, there's this handy holder for your favorite fast food restaurant. Just drop it in there and it's handy. It's dandy. But if you look, there's a special feature. At the bottom, if you'll notice, there is literally a cup holder. That's right. You no longer have to drop your fries all over your seat. It'll fit right into your cup holder. Now, here's the amazing part. Uh, did you know that this raise $48,000? in seed money because people believed in this fry holder. Now tell me about the business that you offer and the value that you represent. If this product could raise 48,000 K U S what do you think your product or service could generate in seed money from investors? If that is who your audience is, for example. Okay. Well, let me show you another thing that's happening here. Yeah, it's real. Um, this product is from the UK. Yeah, you can take your goldfish for a walk now. You can do it. It's right there. This prototype, this prototype generated 78,000 pounds, right? Obviously dollars, pounds, right? In seed money to take this to market. Now, hopefully you're getting the point, right? Like, if they can do it, so can you. The question is, how do they do it? And that's why we are here today. So here is a question, and I'm hoping that everyone, you know, uh, as comfortable as possible, you can take yourself off of mute and let us know why you are here today. I mean, it could be a sentence, a word. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just listen, I'm going to wait for four or five people to share why they, they believe they're here today. I can share Shiraz. My name is Lisa. Not sure if you can see me. Um, so I, I very much uh, need to get more confident with sales. And uh, whenever you put the word neuroscience in front of something, it's like this seems like it's going to be very legitimate, and like I can take it, take it, take it somewhere. So I am here um, because sales artistry sounds nice. And neuroscience means it's probably going to work. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. And you use the word competence. I really appreciate that. That, that mm -hmm. is awesome. And you'll see how that comes into effect. Next, we need four more people to share. I'm not sure if you can see my video, but um, I'm my Rebecca. My apologies. No, it, it's not in the sh share mode, unable to do that, but but thank oh, you. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I am actually, as they call neurodiverse. And so in the last few years, I've just read everything and everything possible on neurodiversity and your neurological system and how to manipulate it and use it to however it's wired to your advantage. So I saw this and I honestly was uh, hooked by that keyword. And I've worked in sales for 15 years, I would say. Um, so yeah, I'm just looking to soak it all up. And, and it, uh, my apologies, it was Rebecca? Yeah. <laughs> Rebecca oh, wow. and friend. That was awesome. That was yeah, awesome. My dog. <laughs> right on time, right? Uh, Rebecca, folks, listen, this is somebody who's been studying this for years. So she gets to check us. She gets to let us know if we're just making this stuff up or is this really uh, applicable? Uh, three more people, please. Yeah, I'll go. Uh, Thank you. My name's Brett. And uh, I just, it was a a no brainer. I always like to take the the opportunity to learn anything I can about sales. It's it's awesome to see everyone else's perspectives and and how everyone does stuff and and uh, learn new strategies. So, thank you. No Brett. brainer. And, 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 and now is that on purpose? Neuroscience? No brainer. It's pretty clever. It is pretty clever. It is pretty. That clever. was a happy accident. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, two more people. Can I hear one more person? How about Gabrielle? Sure. Um, I think, yeah, I just, just, I always like learning and the neuroscience part really caught me. I thought, oh, there's like a scientific backing to it. Um, and I'm curious to know more about sales. 
Fantastic. And uh, I'll give you a bit of background about myself. I'm going back a few years ago. I had a uh, brain disease. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it was, uh, I can look back at it now and be like, whoa, it's kind of cool. In the moment, it wasn't cool. I lost use of my legs. I was, my speech was slurred. I was uh, in a hospital. They couldn't figure it out. Uh, they narrowed it down to something called encephalitis. That was the closest thing that they could bucket my condition into. Fully recovered. I've, uh, I developed some alert, some, um, uh, finicky allergies like meanwhile not so long get along ever since that episode it's kind of fun moving forward from that though it forced me to really consider the role that our minds and our brains play in our everyday life and that was the genesis of what we are doing here today so we're going to sail the seven seas and this is the first one we're absolutely here to figure out what your own not mine what your credibility is see without credibility who wants to listen to you you want to develop the ability to connect, for sure, right? So uh, you want credibility. You want to be. You want to have the ability to connect with people. Somebody already said it. I think it was Lisa right off the top. Is like, hey, confidence. It's kind of a big deal. You want to be able to, hey, show up, but then show out, right? It's not. It's sometimes. You know, GI Joe said, showing up is half the battle. Half the battle. Or, and they also said, knowing is half the battle. And the bottom line is, right? When you do show up, how are you going to show out? Confidence is kind of a big deal. And this is the word I believe that uh, Lisa or Rebecca used was uh, somebody used competence, right? And, and, and you kind of got to know what you're talking about. And it's really important. Another one is comfort. The ability to communicate. Here's the thing. If I can confidently communicate my competence, I will make my client more comfortable and connect with them because they will see my credibility. Now I'm going to try that in a different order. It doesn't really matter what order you do it in. And Brett, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm going to pull on you next. All right. I heard that in a former life, it's true. Everybody, he used to be a, a rapper in high school. So he's like really good with words missing and he can spit and, and vibe. So he's going to do this with me. Are you ready, Brett? Brett's not ready. That's okay. That's okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. Sorry. My mouse is on my other screen. No problem. I'm scrambling. So this, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this again. Ready? I got six C's here and I just want you to say them all in one or two sentence and make it make okay. sense. Right? So I'll, I'll give you another example. My objective is to be more comfortable. So it, it, my confidence and competence shines as I communicate so I can connect with my customer to demonstrate my credibility. You can do that okay. in any order you want, but that's why we're here today. And you'll see how this all ties in at the very end. Now we're, we're layering a cake. You might not see it now. You might not see it in 20 minutes, but by the end, I think everyone will have that aha moment. So go for it, Brett. Yes. Okay. My client is comfortable because my credibility is communicated in my confidence uh, and competency, competency to connect. Ooh, that was, that was epic. Listen, I'm going to give away tech nations, uh, uh, money right now. Like, come on, uh, come on. That, 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 that's worth a prize right there. That was pretty good. Does anyone else want to go, but I'm going to throw in one more variable, uh, customer. So, uh, Haley, I'm already giving away a $5 Tim card on behalf of uh tech nation to Brett. So, uh, don't worry. We'll work out the math afterwards, but Brett definitely, cool. that, that was, that was great. Um, uh, can somebody else, does somebody else want to try? This is a $5 Tim card on the line right here. Uh, someone else to try it, but add customer in there. Lisa, you want to give it a shot? I was just about to unmute. I'm like, okay, let's, let's give it a whirl. Um, I confidently connect with my customer by communicating how credible and competent I am and comfortable with my service. Hey, the reason why these C's are very important, many times in sales, we are speaking about ourselves. We're speaking from a position of I, 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 my, 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 look at me, look at me, look at me. Sales, here is one of your first takeaways. Please Redefine the word sales and call it solve. Because if you're solving a problem for someone, your value shoots through the roof. 
Now watch this. If I walk into a company with my product or service and I solve a problem that they have, watch what happens. Their confidence will grow in me, right? They'll feel more comfortable because I understand their business and they can see how what I offer fits and grows and benefits their business, right? It's eliminating pain, right? And, and because I solve their problem, they can see my competence. And so the customer is happy. How did I do that? I effectively communicated. Now, all of these are neuro triggers. Why? Here is a reality. People, when they're more relaxed, will make more decisions. When people are tense and pressurized, sometimes they want to back up and they need more time and they'll say, I'll call you next week. Oh, I have to talk to somebody. Now, we know nobody on this call has ever happened to you, right? You feel like you got the sale, it's done. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we just need a couple more days. Why aren't they comfortable making that decision right now? How do we make them feel comfortable? Because here's the reality. If they're comfortable, the signature pen moves a lot more smoother on that paper. It's just a reality. Now, uh, can I can I can I get somebody to, to uh, speak up that hasn't yet and just introduce yourself a little bit? Just your name, just anyone who hasn't spoken yet. Okay, we got a shy crowd. That's okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with my early friends. We'll we'll get some late late friends, but here are my early friends. Rebecca, can you take yourself off of mute? Is that all right? Yep. Awesome. Now, uh, uh, how much time do you spend on social media? Um, like an hour a day, I guess. Okay, that's cool. But I'm in my mid thirties, so maybe. <laughs> that's cool. No one's judging. No one's judging. It had nothing to do with you know, uh, one hour or five hours. You could have said twenty minutes. That's how much time you spend. We're gonna evaluate two things that happened about two and a half years ago. So Instagram, we would all agree, is a social setting platform, right? Mm -hmm. And you can use it for commerce for sure, but it started off being a social connection. LinkedIn, we know is a professional platform for a business community. Can we all agree about that? Now I can't mm -hmm. see your responses, but hopefully Rebecca, you get to speak on behalf of everybody. We, we're, we're, we're kind of in agreement about that? I agree, yes. Okay, here's something very interesting. On the right side, you'll see a bunch of emojis in ways that you can act and react to the content that you're seeing. This is one of my old, um, this is one of my old um, uh, social posts, and and I was speaking at an event, uh, and and they wanted me to do a little video. I want you to evaluate with us, Rebecca. Uh, can you just name off all the uh, uh, emojis at the bottom? Like what they mean or represent? Please, sure. Okay. Uh, the first one would be like, yes, uh, okay. love on fire. So obviously good. Okay. Um, honestly, that middle one, I would have no clue. Like people do it in, yeah, like. It's, a, it, it, it's, a, it's a Hawaiian thing and it's yeah. it meant it loosely interpreted. Everything is all good. Okay. There yeah. we go. Uh, and then the next one is applause. So we yeah, got yeah. job, okay. um, sad. And then either it looks great or you love it or it's cute. Um, and then the last one would be like, wow. Okay. Now folks, we can all agree that these are emotional responses. There isn't logic built into these, into these quick ways to respond to what you are seeing. They're all emotional based, love, fire, everything feel. It's all about feeling towards the content that you're consuming. Really important. Now, this is Instagram. Now let's move over to LinkedIn for a second. Okay, so if we were to evaluate LinkedIn, this is interesting. If you recall, just a couple of years ago, there were only two ways to respond in LinkedIn. They've added these additional emojis. Now, I'm not sure if you can see my, can, can you guys see my mouse circling on the screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, hey, let's celebrate. Hey, I love, I'm thinking, wait a second. 
if this is a logic business community, why are they adding an emotional response? And I'm going to fast forward through this, and then we're going to build the case as to why they did this, simply because life is all about making people feel, period. And if you can make me feel comfortable, if you can make me feel that you're competent, chances are you're going to win more and generate more influence. How do you make your clients feel? Like we want to prove to them logically that we are the right choice. So we'll bust out our spreadsheets. Amazing. Do it. Get your spreadsheets out. We're going to show them their, your ROI. Okay, fantastic. We're going to show them the specs of, of, of uh, you know, uh, battery life, whatever you want to show them. Fantastic. And they are important. But how do you make your customer feel? Here is another takeaway. At the end of the day, we all can agree. People will buy from people they like. People will buy from people that make them feel comfortable. People will buy from people they feel are competent. People will buy from people who demonstrate a measure of confidence in what they are actually selling. So if you become and exude these elements, guess what? They will see it in you. Now, I'm going to go back to Lisa. Lisa, are you, are you with me? I'm here. Awesome. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Now, Lisa, um, uh, can you uh, tell me about your favorite speaker? Who is it? Who's your favorite speaker? So I, when I saw it come up on the screen, my immediate thought, and just mm -hmm. to give a little bit of context, I have a 10-month-old daughter. Okay. I watch a lot of Bear in the Big Blue House right now. Okay. And Luna is a character on that show. And right now, she is my favorite speaker. When Luna comes on the screen, there's like a melt, like a softness that I feel and a comfort. Ladies and gentlemen, we can wrap up. For the child's reference. <laughs> can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we literally could wrap up right here. We won't, but like literally, uh, that might encapsulate what we're speaking about today. Because she feels a warm blanket, she's drawn in. And no matter what Luna says at this point, it will probably be received well. What does that have to do with sales, uh, sales artistry and neuroscience? How are you relaxing their amygdala, and we're going to speak about the amygdala. How are you relaxing their emotions, allowing you to get past further into engagement? All right, so Luna, and you said Luna because if you can just repeat why Luna is important to you. Um, she is a very calming presence, and she has Love this it. like silky smooth voice, um, and a really sweet giggle. <laughs> so okay. those things make me really like her. So, so there's a measure of sincerity there. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, I got three names I'll be working with unless somebody else volunteers and you can volunteer at any time, but I'm going back to my friend, Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca, who's your favorite speaker and why? And maybe her mic isn't working. That's okay. Haley, I got to pull you in, buddy. I got to pull you in. Who's your favorite speaker and why? Um, something that uh, just came to mind. I was at an event in Montreal this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And the leader of their student union was speaking to everybody. And it just uh, struck me how confident and calm and cool collected she sounded. And I was just uh, a little bit envious because it seemed like she just had a great command of the room. Wow. And that and that you felt stem from their their confidence and you used another word, not envious. There's another word you used in there. Um, she was calm, cool, collected. She calm, had a command. Okay. Calm, cool and collected. All right. I like the word command as well. All right. In as much. All right. Uh, before I ask Brett and Brett, I'm coming for you before be, before I ask Brett the same question. Uh, here is a reality, right? I, I'm going to risk stop sharing and see if I can reshare. That's okay. Uh, if um, I'm not sure, are you guys able to, uh, uh, to see each other again? 
Yeah, fantastic. Okay, great. Here, here's something in interesting, Brett. Um, can you smile for everyone? Okay, it's good. Uh, here's really, uh, I'm, my apologies, I don't see your name on your screen. Uh, Lisa, okay, great. Um, did, did everyone see when Lisa smiled, when Brett smiled? Did you notice that? Okay. I'm going to stay on this principle for a second. Did you know that the human brain can differentiate, differentiate between a real smile and a fake smile? Again, and you're not trained that way. Most people, unless you're like really good at just thinking like you're a really good actor or actress, okay, great, right? But the reality is most people can recognize the difference between a real and a fake. Sincerity matters. People will recognize if you're being sincere. They'll recognize if you believe in your product or service because if you don't, don't go. Why? It's because you won't feel good afterwards because you'll feel like you tricked them into something. You're not going to feel comfortable about it. They're going to pick up on that vibe for lack of a better phrase and it, it'll be harder to engage you have to learn how to fall in love with your product and service first once you do that they will see your joy come out now brent you got a pretty good smile buddy i'll be honest with you, you got a pretty good smile now uh, Thank you. here here's another reality um so uh uh, uh the human brain can distinguish the difference between a real laugh and a fake laugh. Okay, maybe we won't call it a fake laugh. We'll call it the courtesy laugh. And we've all done it, right? We've all done that courtesy laugh. The human brain can tell the difference. That's why sincerity matters in sales engagements. And as soon as we say sales, all of a sudden, Unfortunately, it's still married to grimy used calls, car, car sales, right? And that's not what we're talking about here. It's again, can you respell the word sale and simply spell it S O L V E? And if you can respell or reframe the word sale to be solve, you will win more. You will. Because you are going to feel like a boss, right? You walked in there, they're having this problem, they're having that problem. You're like, hmm. And you're, you know, you're empathetically listening the whole time. You're like, hmm. You're asking great questions and you're writing them all down. Hmm. Have you considered? And, oh, and then you get to it and they'll be like, whoa, whoa, this person is good. Are you guys with me so far? Again, we're just building this cake layer here. We're just building and building. All right, I'm gonna get back to what we're doing. And Haley, save me, please, if um, it doesn't share. Because sometimes we're being a little finicky today. There we go. Hey, we did it. Are, are you guys able to see my screen still? Yep. Okay, awesome. And it won't go on presenter. There we go. All right. Uh, Brett, your favorite uh, speaker and why? This is a tough one. Um, I'm just going to go with the classic. I'm going to okay. go with Tony Robbins. Do it, buddy. He, he, Tony Robbins embodies a lot of the principles that you've uh, touched on. So he's competent. He's, uh, he's got a, a level of comfort when he's presenting on stage, which presenting is never easy. So it's kind of calming to see that. Um, and yeah, he's confident. That's a big, a big thing for me and okay. obviously providing motivation. Motivation. Okay. I'm going to write motivation down. Thank you. I, we're going to circle back to complete this thought, but let's get right into the meat of why we're here today. In our brain is this almond size element called the You'll hear it pronounced different ways, amygdala, amygdala, however you want to pronounce it, it's up to you. But the function means more than how you pronounce it. It is the emotional center of your brain, right? So decisions, when people are making them, when faced with a threat, for example, we have uh, four responses. Two of them we are aware of, fight and flight. The other two that you may not be as familiar with, and that is freeze and fawn. 
Now, next Thursday, 4 p.m., you're obviously welcome back. We're going to speak a lot about homeostasis and the effects of when you're in a sales engagement and the customer freezes up. How do you thaw them out to get them on your side and see things from your perspective? We'll talk about that next Thursday. But for now, let's speak about fight or flight. And in the amygdala, your emotional center, what is happening here on a regular basis? Well, here is a reality. Ooh, look at that jump, jump. All right. Here, d d d you're all seeing that, that, um, that almond size amygdala in your brain. I won't get into, you know, the, the front cortex and the lobes and all the other fun stuff and, 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 and the parts of the brain, but it's situated in a place in your brain where it has to pass through a lot of processing before it actually gets to a point where it's making a decision. Now, I said a lot of words that probably takes a fra you know fractions of a second. So it doesn't take that long because we are literally uh, that amazingly made. But here is a reality. Pleasure and pain. What allows information to be filtered in a positive way through the amygdala, through your senses, is does this feel pleasurable? Is the sensation ple pleasurable? Well, then come on in. I I like what you're saying. I like you. There's some there's something sincere about you. So because you're sincere, my amygdala will actually allow you through to places where I am comfortable. And if I'm comfortable, boy, that's a step closer to yourself. So here's the third takeaway. How do you make your clients feel comfortable? There's many ways to do that. We won't deep dive into it today. That's a part of next Thursday. But it's very important to answer that question. How are you making them feel comfortable? Now, I mentioned two things, pleasure and pain. Most times, uh, has anybody heard this term uh, shared before? Uh, uh, what are your pain points? Has anybody ever had that conversation with 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 a customer? Now, I, again, my apologies, I can't see all your faces right now. But has anyone heard that concept of pain points in sales? Yes. Thank you. And what does that mean to have pain point and find a customer's pain points? To me, it, it's it's that problem that you're looking to solve. So where they are experiencing pain, how can you reduce that pain? But in the real world and the way that our brain works, if we have pain, you know what we do? We put a Band-Aid on it. It's associated with shame. We don't really want people to know. That's why we cover up in shame. We, and that's a human instinct, right? Like, oh, I'm going to pull back here because they're going to see my ugly. And people will cover up their ugly with all sorts of makeup, not cosmetically, but maybe cosmetically from a business sense. Maybe they'll overcompensate in a different way, all because they want to cover up their pain. So when you're in that conversation and you're speaking about pain, be careful how you manage that. Because if you're the one poking their bruise, you could be the one on your way out. People aren't the most comfortable talking about it in your first meeting. Now, once they're comfortable, they'll probably open up. But you can't go pain points your first engagement with a client. Why? Because you're poking their pain. Ow, ow, this person's hurting me. Ow, why are they talking about everything that's wrong with me? Meaning the business. But what if they're personalizing their business? That's a problem if you're going after pain. So here's a way to re- frame pain to get you past the amygdala, that little almond size, little nut in your brain. Talk about the pleasure side of it. Now, we all know the concept of this two sides to every coin, correct? Okay, great. The other side of pain is obviously pleasure. So I'm going to give you a phrase and I got three friends. If there is a fourth friend, I'd love to have a fourth friend. Let's see if we can get a fourth friend uh, hanging out with us. Are, are, are you guys still seeing? Uh, is there a, first, a fourth person? So, so we got Rebecca, we got Brett, we got Lisa, we, we got Haley. Is there another person willing to speak up? 
You don't have to turn your camera on. You just got to like say hello. That's all. And that's okay. We got a shy group today. That's okay. Haley. By the way, can we just give Haley some love for her hair? Like, like <laughs> it's looking pretty good, isn't it? It's looking pretty good. All How right. kind. Now, uh, did, did, did anybody see Haley light up when I made that comment? Was I sincere when I made that comment? Yes. Okay. I was because I, the <laughs> first thing that I noticed as soon as uh, uh, Haley and I jumped on a few minutes earlier, we're just trying to work out some through some tech issues. And I was like, wait a second. She's got a different shade up here. And then down here, it's a different color. I was like, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Wish I had long hair. Like, I could do that. I would do it too. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm doing. I'm connecting on something that is positive before we get into the negative. If I'm throwing out a loose component, oh, I really like your glasses. And they know that like the amount of sales engagements that I've been in and we spoke about gardening and I know nothing about gardening. Can I tell you that if I walk into an office and I see a bunch of plants, I'm talking about gardening. I am. Because I'm trying to find common ground so they'll let me get past the amygdala. That's what I'm trying to do. And if you can get past it, oh, okay, let me bring it into a traditional, typical sales setting. Brett, for our benefit, can you describe what uh, the concept of the gatekeeper is? Yeah, so the, the gatekeeper is who decides who gets to pass and who doesn't get to pass. So they get to filter through the people. Right. So you're calling and generally, you know, historically, it's been a secretary, an executive assistant that will pick up the phone because you're trying to get the director of uh, the IT director and perhaps there's somebody fronting the phone and they'll they'll answer the phone. And he says, um, what does he say? He says, um, uh, he says, uh, uh, who are you? Uh, you're calling about what's your name? Is he expecting your call? And then all of a sudden you're getting info at acmecompany.ca. You're not getting the real email address. For example, if you're cold calling, does that happen to anybody? And the point is it's a reality. A gatekeeper is a reality, but it's also in our minds and it's called the amygdala. And if we can, again, relax the amygdala, be friends with the amygdala, just be comfortable because you're smiling and you're nice. Chances are you'll win more often. Now, who's a fan of suits? All I got is four friends today. That's okay. You're, you're all my friends, but I got four people who are actively you know, involved in my life right now. Rebecca, is suits on, was suits ever on your list of, um, of uh, shows that you watched? Definitely. Yeah. I binge watched the whole thing uh, in the first maybe, oh gosh, two months my daughter was born all like when I was up in the night. I just watched like 12 episodes of Suits a day. <laughs> okay. Between that and Luna, you had a busy, busy life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, uh, Harvey Specter. Can you tell everybody about the character? I'm sure you all know who Harvey Specter is, right? Uh, can you tell us about the character Harvey Specter? Um, handsome, <laughs> handsome, uh, he confident, uh, maybe a little bit cold sometimes. A little, a lot. He was frigid and cold. he was a little bit of a jerk. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, but he was handsome. So, <laughs> okay. So I guess, apparently that makes up for it. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess the the frequency that he could easily burn bridges because of his inability to connect with people in the real world wouldn't do you well. Does he win? Oh gosh, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yeah, uh, he won. But can we can we agree if you're if you're a fan of the show, he could have win won more often and a lot more easily if he had just been a little bit more sincere and nice. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. We're glamorizing, you know, star salespeople as sometimes as stealth steel 
hard elements when it's okay to just be you. Cause I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. There's nobody that can represent the product that Lisa represents better than her because she knows it more intimately. The service that she offers, nobody can do it better than her. Uh, for everyone on this call right now, nobody can do your job better than you. Why? Because you have the competence in that field. Could I come in and sell it? I guarantee you I could. Guarantee I could come into your world. I've done it. Uh, people have called me out on it. Over the years, I've been doing this for many years. Uh, walk into an environment when companies bring me in for sales training. Like, well, you should try this. All right, next Tuesday, I'm going out with you on sales calls. Let's go. And I'll have fun. And I mean, if the company's paying my ticket, I'm going, okay, let's go. And, and we'll go out. I always make them the same deal. I get your commission if I sell it. And they'll take me to customers. I haven't like I haven't batted a thousand, okay? But so, but I'm selling better than them. But here's the difference. I don't have the get upness to do it again tomorrow with the same product service. You know, my product or service is helping other people. If I can help you sell better, hmm. Now, Haley, you mentioned being in Ottawa. I'm not sure if, or sorry, Montreal. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't Laval. Where, where were you? I was in Montreal. Oh, it was in Montreal. Okay. And you heard somebody speaking and, and, and it could, it would be fair to use the word passion. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Is, does anybody recognize my energy levels right now? When you are communicating with your clients, is that passion evident? passion. Cut it any way you want, baby. Cut it any way you want, you know, in a romantic way or for your product or service, it can set things on fire. Passion is demonstrated in your energy. It's demonstrated in your enthusiasm. It's demonstrated in your response time and your brain responds to passion every time. Not most times, your brain takes notice when it recognizes passion. That's why when you have charismatic speakers, they gather a large crowd around them always. But somebody who's reading a textbook is going to put people to sleep. How passionate are you? Because your brain will recognize and pull it in. I want some of that. Look. I'm gonna go in a different direction again. I'm gonna go in a different direction. Uh, if you look at your window, if you're if you're kind of like in the GTA or maybe even Ontario, it's pretty cloudy out there today. Life's been like that for this, I don't know, this COVID cloud that's been hovering and kind of going and the skies are opening and then everyone's kind of like, ah. Can you be that ray of sunshine through your product or service mm, through you, period? One of the points of today is People sell, companies don't. How bright is your light when you walk in the room? Because everybody's looking for those clouds to part permanently. Can you be a part of that? What's that word? Solution or solve? Because if you can make me feel good about my existence, I assure you, I might feel good about what you're trying to offer me. And what we're talking about here today is connecting was also sailing the seven seas, right? One of those words was connect. It will allow you to connect with your audiences more effectively. Now I'm saying audiences as if you're speaking to a large group, but it could also be one on one. Are you guys kind of tracking with me? If I'm going off in left field, like, so I'm just trying to look for a little bit of verbal cues. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Uh, Brett, are you, are you tracking? Because I'm about to pivot in a different direction so we can start I, put, putting some icing on the cake so we can have some delicious to eat into afterwards. Haley, are you okay? All good, talking? yeah. All good? Okay, fantastic. I'm going to continue to share here. Rebecca, I'll ask you anyways. You're good? Yeah, I'm good. How How old is your baby? Oh, she's not a baby anymore. So she's six. <laughs> okay. She's got opinions and all that stuff now. Oh yeah. You yeah. know, isn't, isn't that funny though, Brett? Uh, I'm Brett. I'm not sure if you have any kids. No. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Wow. I feel old. He just called me, sir. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that's okay, Brett. That's okay. Uh, that's okay. You call me, sir. Uh, Rebecca, I got two daughters and, and here's something amazing, Rebecca. Um, 
you uh, don't like you always when you when you're thinking about having a kid or multiple, you're thinking about, oh, I want to have a baby. But you never think about I want to have a six year old with an opinion. You never think about that they're going to get older and they're eventually going to be 11 and a 16 year old. You don't think, oh, I really want a 16 year old. You always want a baby. That's true. And now here is Rebecca saying, yeah, but now it has an opinion too. I know. That's why we opted for a dog instead of a kid number two. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I, I, I assure you, I'm not playing Rebecca here, but what did I do? We're here in a session, right? We're, 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 we're supposed to be talking about neuroscience. And then all of a sudden I'm making a connection with Rebecca. Why? Because I have kids, uh, two daughters and she has a daughter and, and, and why not? Do you think that you talking more about your product or service is going to help you sell more? How much information are they really going to intake? What was wrong with me taking the time to think about Rebecca's existence right now? She's my aunt. She's right in front of me. So why would I like just walk right past that? Why would I do that? Like, I, I seriously want, like, uh, uh, we, when, when my kids were younger, we, there's a show. I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of the big comfy couch. Some of you guys are probably <laughs> older, young enough that you grew up on the big comfy couch. Right. And, and, and there, and there was a character, Luna. In the big comfy couch. Does everybody yeah, remember? Lu Lunette. Oh. You can't mess up the Luna and Lunette. They're different. <laughs> Now you know. Apparently, apparently I can. <laughs> and guess what? I just did. I just did. What am I also doing? Guys, I, 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 this is what I do every everywhere that I am. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hang out with people. I, I, I'm just gonna do it. So you can tell that I'm being sincere in my commentary, but I'm also case studying it live for everybody. Lisa was like, I don't think so. And she felt comfortable just be like, boy, you don't know. Let me tell you who Lunette is. You better get it right. And and, and, and we're just kind of like hanging out. Do you think that uh, Lisa's going to remember me? Just because like we're making a connection. Or am I trying to sell something? Are you guys kind of tracking? Is everybody tracking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I was going to use Brent as an example. Like Brent looks like he's partying all the time. He's got like, like glow, glow, like like, I don't know, cups or whatever that background is, looks at like his backyard is all lit up or something, whatever it is. But like, like, and, and, and again, you guys can easily see that, right? And I think everybody can see that. And, and, and why not talk about it? Why not? You can talk about the last frat party that you were at and they had like something like that hanging out and, and, and you had all that, right? Connect with people. It makes a difference. It really does. I'm gonna go back to uh, back to the deck, and hopefully it works. If it doesn't, don't worry. Haley will save us because she always does. And I took a risk. I took a risk. Did it pay off? Did it pay off? It did not pay off. It didn't. It didn't. Sorry, guys. I'm going to try one more thing again. I apologize, and let's see if it happens. And we'll get right back to this. Let me just close this. And do do do. You know what I'm doing, Haley, every time? I'm closing it and reopening the file. And it seems to like it when it's a fresh file. That might be the um, last time that I close it, so we don't have to waste time again. My apologies, Maybe everybody. that's the trick. Here we go. And share desktop window. Window. And there it is. Oh, my gosh. Surprise, surprise. And share. And let's get back into. Okay. And we're going to power through this so I can get to. The next part of what we're going to speak about. Ah, sorry, guys. Talked about the amygdala. Yes, we did. All right. A little bit. All right. Here we go. How do you move people to action? So that's literally a question. My apologies. I should have said I'm asking a question. Rebecca, how do you move people? Um, I don't know. Okay, Lisa, how do you move people? <laughs> All right, uh, Brett, how do you move people? Would it be through uh, connecting with them and 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 using that common ground? Uh, I th I think so for sure. 
I, it's more of a question for you. How do you move people? Okay, yeah, I would uh, I connect with people. Okay, and so if I were to uh, re reframe that right back to you, Lisa and Rebecca, how do you move people? Like you could use brute force literally and push them out of the way. I mean, if you really wanted to, but how do you move people? Uh, I definitely do the same thing through social connection, making people feel comfortable, looking at everything from what they're wearing, the words that they use, their surroundings, pick something, anything, and, and you can always connect on it. And like you said, if you see plants, you talk about gardening, you know, if someone's into hockey, I'm a terrible Canadian, but you know, I've got like a few names memorized and I'll be like, oh yeah, you know, that game on this day, what a score. And then that's it. And hopefully <laughs> then I'll continue on. Yeah, you said score. Yeah, you could tell that it might not be in your alley, but that, but yeah, Probably hey, not. hey, but but you can feel, you can feel the effort. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Haley, uh, how do you move people? Uh, I would say trying to yeah come up with a common ground and relate to them on a personal level. Okay, okay, that's fantastic. And uh, I'll put it uh, when you went to it, when you went to Montreal and you heard this speaker. Did their passion move you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So their their energy moved you? Yes. Okay. So I want you guys to con consider uh, the word emotion. And again, if your amygdala controls your emotion, I would love for you to, again, we were, I was asking you to respell sales as solve. Here's another word to, here's another way to register emotion, e-motion, meaning... Can it be energy in motion? Your energy, look, if you're in sales and you show up at home and you still got juice, you might have left some of your energy in your tank and you should have poured it out that day. Your energy will literally move people. Sales is rewarding. It's one of the most uh, lucrative uh, roles that you can have in an organization with very little uh, formal um, uh, education. But if you can, if you know how to connect with people, and if you put energy in into motion, meaning emotion, you're going to move people in the direction of your destiny. You just will. So again, I would encourage everybody to reframe their understanding of emotion as simply energy in motion. And when you do that, like if if you make somebody mad or somebody's feeling mad, uh, hopefully their fist isn't motioning through the wall, right? That's not what we're talking about, but. Maybe it is. Maybe that's how people react and respond when they are emotional. Some people, when they're emotional, maybe it's tears. Maybe it's joy. Maybe it's, I'll give you what you want. Energy in motion. Again, just a cute little way to reframe emotion, but something that really should be considered. And when we're speaking about uh, emotion, generally, we think about it. The center of your emotion tends to be your heart, right? And if your customer right in front of you is kind of flat, because we've all had those experiences where you're bringing it, right? Like, you know, you're hitting everything that your sales trainer, your manager, your boss taught you. You know that you are, you're going to solve their problem. And they're just sitting there like, hey, I'm waiting for something to get my heart going. Uh, you got to move me somehow. And there are three ways that you can do that. And I just want to reinforce from a different perspective just because it's easier to remember and i kind of like little acronyms in this case cpr right uh not maybe not an acronym but like three letters you're going to remember cpr to lift your the emotions of your customer's heart we already heard a number of examples about connecting with your clients it takes more energy to perform than it does to simply inform so if you want to show up and grow your business, sales is the way to do that, right? But if you're simply there to inform, you're going to leave money on the table, perform. And it takes energy to perform versus inform. Who do you want to be? Well, it, it's you can see it in the results of your sales. It will absolutely cost you your energy that day. And if you're willing to pay the price to, gra to graduate from inform, simply, well, it's, we have it in red and blue. No, we have it in two of the most amazing colors because that's what makes the sun reflect. All, and, and, then you, and, and then you layer it a little bit. 
If you can perform, you will generate emotion, meaning energy in motion, but you got to deliver it with a measure of passion. If you're simply informing and not performing, you're not activating somebody's heart. There's no CPR. Any questions on that point? Just the difference between inform and perform. Okay, so the question is to inform or to perform. That is the Shakespeare question, but sorry, I had to get cheesy on you guys. Thanks for not laughing at me, Brett. I appreciate that. Uh, the last one in CPR, of course, is right in front of you, and that is simply rapport. What does that mean to, you know, it's finding common ground. Now, here's the trick question, Haley. What do you feel is the difference between connecting and rapport? Uh, emotion. Fantastic. Fantastic. Any, anyone else? Any other thoughts? Uh, some of the differences between connect and rapport? I think connection is initial and there's a, a time to it. And then rapport is an ongoing thing and evolving. Yeah, it's beautiful. You mm -hmm. enter the engagement connecting, you leave with it with common ground. You have a rapport now. Rapport graduates into relationship. But you got to start somewhere. But it's your brain that needs to have its head up and out of your sales manual and look around and find some common ground to connect. Whether it be Leafs. Uh, let's find a better hockey team. I'm joking. Uh, maybe the, the, the Raptors. Like Maybe it's sports. Maybe just stay away from the weather. Right. That's kind of too basic. Let's probably not go there. Right. Everybody. Hey, it's raining outside today. Oh, no. OK, so let's stay away from weather a little bit. But it, it, maybe it's gardening. Maybe there's a picture of their family on their desk. Wow. OK, if you see a picture and you have kids and they have kids. Talk about it. now. if you don't have kids, you're talking about somebody else's kids. I don't know if people are comfortable with that. But if you have kids, talk about it. Look at the environment. Find common ground to connect. Don't inform, perform. That will lead to rapport, which will ultimately build your relationship. And we'll just move on to the uh, next point here. Uh, are you going to let me? All right. Uh, I don't want to give you that too fast. Here is a reality. And it literally is reality. Um, uh, Rebecca, if I can just get you to read this for everybody. Although they can see it. Here's what I would love for you to do, Rebecca. Uh, channel your inner Luna. And say it with the most calming, passionate voice that you probably could. This quote right here. Go for it. We enjoy being entertained more than we enjoy being educated. Hey, that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, I think it, I, I think it was Brett. You talked about Tony Robbins. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I, I have to hop off right now. But yeah, it was Tony Robbins. OK, just before you go, can you read this in your best Tony Robbins voice? Oh, uh, <laughs> not easy. How about the we, best? How about the best Brett voice? Okay, we enjoy being entertained more than we enjoy being educated. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Brett. Um, and thank uh, hopefully, you. We see, hopefully, we see you next week as well, buddy. Of course. All right. Now, Lisa, can you give the? Can you deliver this in your best voice? I think Lisa had to hop off. We are running oh. a little bit over, so a couple people had to run. My apologies. I thought we were going to 5.15. No, that's all right. Is it 5.15? It uh, it's 5 o'clock. My apologies, folks. I uh, prepared uh, as if we were going to 5.15, so I'll just, for your benefit, I'll fast forward a little bit, and we're not that far. Probably another, I would say, four minutes, and we'll be able to hop off. When, we were, when I was asking about uh, characteristics of your favorite, char uh, favorite speaker, would it be fair if I'm going to give you some of the lists and I'll, I'll, I'll just give you the list. We don't have to go through it together as an exercise, but determine, is this a skill or a choice to be calming? Is, is that a skill or a choice? Can you choose to be calming? Another word was sincerity. Can you choose to be sincere or is that a skill? Confidence. Is that a skill or a choice? Passion. Is that a skill or a choice? Calm, cool, collected. Uh, is that a skill or a choice? Comfort and motivation. 
Are those skills or choices? The point is, when you're in front of your audience, majority of what it will take for you to effectively relax their amygdala is your choice. It's an attitude, not a skill. And if you go in there with the right approach and you're approaching them because you think it's about them, not you, you're going to win more often. Just uh, uh, last, I'm, I just skipped over a couple of slides. Uh, here, here, here fundamentally is the point. Have fun. Right? I'm busting out my, some of my dad jokes, but have fun. Because if you're not having a good time, they are probably good, not going to be having a good time either. Now, I, I've been in sales conversations that lasted a lot longer than they actually should. But by the end of it is like, we like you. When are we seeing you again? Okay, yeah, we forgot to talk about the sales order. Okay, this, that, this, that. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. But let's get back to the fun part. People want to have more fun in life. It's a reality, especially because of the way the world has gone. Enjoy yourself just a little bit more. This exercise is for next week. And so if you want to come back, we can walk through that next week. And again, we're here because of credibility. But sailing the seven seas so your customer can light up. And when you walk into a room and you have these on, they're all fired up. And then you can activate these in your customer because of the neuroscience of how the amygdala works. You can make them feel more comfortable and they can connect and feel your credibility. Chances are you're going to win more often. Folks, if there aren't any other questions, thank you so much for joining us. And, and again, you're all welcome to join us back next week. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll hand it back over to you, Haley. All right. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Sorry we went a little bit over, but I'm happy that uh, you made the time to come join us. And thank you so much, Shiraz, for uh, all your knowledge. I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon, and we hope to see you again next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.